Hey guys, Shad here again, and in this video series, I'm going to be talking about the cube counting section of the PAT, which is actually another favorite of mine. But like I said before, I kind of like every section of the PAT, it just makes me feel like a little kid again. Now, the cube counting section is actually one of those sections you can easily ace with proper technique and enough practice. So I'm going to go over all the different rules and how to approach each question. But first, we need to learn the basics of what this section is all about. All right, let's get into it. So first, let's talk about what this section is all about. So you're given a figure that consists of a bunch of cubes that have essentially been glued together, like the one I've shown here. Now imagine this for a second. Your friend comes along, takes a bucket full of paint, and pours it all over the figure from different directions. And you get something like this. Now in our example, the paint was red and it covered all surfaces of the figure, even the faces back here, which we can't see. Now this is an important note. The only faces that don't get covered with paint are, well, the bottom ones, because we have to remember that this figure is resting on the ground. It's not just floating in the air. And this actually brings us to our first rule for cube counting, which is that the bottom faces are never painted. So the figure that they give us can be thought of like this, as resting on the ground. But on the DAT, it's obviously given to us like this, not colored or displayed on the ground. But these are simply assumptions we have to make. Okay, time for the second rule, which says that cubes must have at least one face in contact with another cube. In other words, a cube can't be connected to another cube solely via a line angle. So what does this mean? Well, this picture shows it perfectly down here. Pretty much, cubes have to be touching another cube with at least one of their faces. So in this example, uh, the back cube, this one, has its front face satisfying the requirement, and the front cube, this one, has its back face satisfying the requirement. Now, if we look at this example right here, neither cube satisfy the requirements, so this violates the rule. This rule just helps with assuming the presence of cubes that you can't see, which is actually our third rule, which states that cubes are assumed present only if they are supporting another cube, or if they need to be there for the cube to be fully connected, as we talked about in rule number two. Let's talk about the first point first. I've highlighted this column of green cubes in green as it shows this point perfectly. So it's pretty easy to tell that this column is made up of three cubes. The top one, the middle one, and the lower one which we can't see but we assume it's present as it has to support the cubes above it. So that's all that, that's all that this point is trying, to, is trying to get to. It's pretty intuitive. Now the second point Let's look at a cube back here, this one right there. Now as it is right now, we can't tell if this little white triangle we see is the right face of this far cube or if it's the top face of just another cube. In other words, we don't know if there's a third cube in this row of cubes right here. However, if there's no cube there, then this cube is connected to this cube solely via a line angle, which we know is not feasible from rule two. Therefore, we can assume that this white triangle right here represents the top face of a third cube in this row, as it's required for the figure to be fully connected. All right, guys, last but not least, I wanna take a moment and talk to you guys about the two different views you guys will encounter on the DAT. So. The figure you will get will either look like this, where the cubes are slanted to the right, or like this, where the cubes are slanted to the left. In both figures, though, we can see the front faces of the cubes as perfect little squares. These are the two possibilities. I bring this up because a lot of prep companies, I'm talking about the big ones out there, have figures that look like this, or this, or something like this and they don't have it just for explanation videos, but they have practice questions like this as well. And it's all wrong. You will never run into views like this on the real exam. And because of that, some other questions are not representative at all because when a figure is 
in one of these views, you can get weird illusions happening when edges line up. And this right here is a perfect example of that. Um, you got to get used to looking at the correct figures because building up your speed for the cube counting section doesn't really work if you're practicing on the wrong type of questions. So be wary of that and practice smart guys because as a student myself, I know how precious our extra time is. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and join me next time as I go over some approaches you can use to ace this section every single time.